everyone, it's Julia Mark here from RV Love and we just had a really exciting realization. So we've officially lived on wheels and mobile in our RV longer than we ever lived in a stick and brick home together. So we thought that was a pretty amazing milestone and not something too many people can say. But in talking about that, we looked around our home and we realized there are actually so many things that we've done in that time to make our RV a home. And so some of these you may have seen in videos or blog posts already and plenty of them I think maybe you haven't. So we're going to take you on a little tour of our RV today and show you the mods, improvements and upgrades that we've made. So stay tuned. Alright, so we're going to start at the front of the RV and then gradually make our way back. So the first thing I want to do is show you what we've done here in the front area where I've created my RV office. Now we've done a whole separate video that goes into a lot of detail about this office and explaining uh, the detail of it. So we'll put a link to that down below. But just to give you a quick overview, what Mark did here is he built a little wooden shelf that just goes across this keyboard tray so that it keeps my laptop and the monitor stationary and the laptop tray pulls out underneath. So Mark has built a, a little wooden box here to make use of this floor area in front of my feet because I am short and I need something to rest my feet on but it has a hinged lid so I can use it for storage. I usually keep some shoes and miscellaneous things in there but it also doubles as a footrest while I'm working which is awesome and as a step stool when I need to get up into these higher cupboards. Makes it easy to reach. So it stays out of the way, but it's really practical and handy and makes optimal use of this space in front of the passenger seat. May not work as well if you're tall and you have long legs, but if you're short like me and you have space, then it's a really great way to utilize that extra little corner here. All right, let's show you some other things we've done up here in the front area of the cab. Next thing we want to show you up here in the front area is this big map up in this front cab. When we bought the RV, this wasn't actually a TV. This RV had three TVs, one up here, one in the midship, and one in the bedroom. We don't watch TV. In fact, in the three and a half years that we've been in this coach, we've never watched TV. Uh, so it was really silly to have the TV up here, and we love travel, and we're inspired about doing more travel, so by having a map that's a, of the whole world, it's a great inspiration to keep us looking forward to that. This was actually a smaller version of a map that we had in our old townhome. We had a gigantic one that we got from Ikea and we just took a digital photo of that and then had one, a new canvas print made to the exact size that we wanted to fit this space. And so what we did to mount this is we have the original TV mount that's right there and you can see some little Velcro command strips at the bottom and then I just put a board here that's at the same angle as the wood up there so it fits very solid and then you press it against those command strips and it holds completely still driving down the road even on bumpy roads. It's a pretty great install if I do say so myself. Alright let's go check out the main living area. Alright so this is the main living space of our RV. You see I've got the kitchen, living area and dining area. Alright so nothing has really changed in the living area here but we have done a pretty big modification to our dining area. So this was a typical booth dinette in an RV and you can see this is what it used to look like from the factory. We didn't really like the booth dinette. It worked fine but it just really wasn't very exciting to us. It felt a little bit like a kiddie booth dinette and of course we don't have kids and we aren't kids. But we didn't want to remove the booth dinette because one thing that we really love are big storage drawers that we have underneath each of the seats and they were great and we didn't want to lose those. And the seats are comfortable so we decided to keep those but I like the idea of U-shaped dining. So let's just quickly explain what we did here. We removed the regular booth dining table and you can see that we've replaced it with just a little round, kind of like a cocktail bar table really, and you can't really see it there, but if you come closer, there's a brown storage ottoman over here in the corner. So let's pull all this apart and show you what we actually did. So once we've removed the dining table, we had this open space, so we measured and found an ottoman that almost perfectly fits this space in terms of the height and the width. So it actually gives us a U-shaped seating. I can actually sit here and put my legs up right by the window, which I love, 
and it's got a storage area underneath. So this is where we store all of the really important things in the RV, like wine and chocolate. We're almost out. <laughs> and we really liked that we could move this table anywhere else in the RV. So if we happen to be sitting over here with friends, we can bring this out and this is where we can put drinks and snacks and all enjoy them here. So it's been a really fantastic change that we made to our living area. We absolutely love it. It's a pretty small table, but it is actually just enough for us to have two plates, some silverware and a couple of glasses for us to enjoy a meal. So this leather storage ottoman I just found on overstock.com and same for this little round table. This is actually height adjustable, but Mark put a screw in at the side so that it stays fixed and doesn't spin. So because it's just got a single leg and a round base, it doesn't take up a leg area here. So you've got plenty of leg space when you're sitting at the dining area. This base actually has a little bit of weight in it. So if you're wondering what happens on travel days, it's actually never even come close to falling over on travel days. And we mostly don't even move it, but we did, when we started, just pushed it a little bit under the front of the ottoman. So it just under the lip. So it, you can see it's not gonna move any further than that. But honestly, most of the time, we don't even bother but if you're in a travel trailer or a fifth wheel doing something like this you probably want to make sure that it's more secure but in our motorhome it's never been a problem so now let's show you what we did in the kitchen similar to the tv in the front of the rv we had a solution for the tv in the middle of the rv as well we don't do this all the time in fact you can clearly see we're not doing it right now but we have command strips that are mounted onto this tv on the sides and the top of it and then we have felt strips mounted on the back of a whiteboard with the other half of those Velcro command strips, and then we allows us to simply snap that whiteboard over the top of the TV so we can write on it with dry erase markers whenever we're working on a big project. Alright, so the kitchen modifications were really short and simple. The only two things we did in here was a paper towel holder. We thought this was a really nice use of space between the light and the valance and so it was a very simple installation and we just put the paper towel holder up there. It's still very easy to grab. Big benefit is that it keeps the paper towel off of the countertop because countertop space is usually pretty limited in an RV. The second modification we did in the kitchen was installing a far superior faucet. The standard RV faucet that came with this was pretty much just a plastic unit. This is a much more robust unit. It's a Delta residential faucet. And it's, it's a nice one. It's got the pull-out sprayer that can run regular water or the spray. And I also drilled a hole in the countertop to be able to install a soap dispenser. So again, I don't need to have nearly as many things on the countertop. This keeps it nice and clean countertop. This has been a really nice upgrade. We love this faucet. And we never did a video about this installation, but it was actually a very simple installation. We'll include a link to the blog post of the people that we followed when we were doing our installation. So this is my RV office. This is definitely the largest modification we did to the RV. When we bought this RV, it was a bunkhouse model. This would have been an upper bunk. This is the monitor for whoever was up in the upper bunk. And this rail here is where the second bunk would have been. And then there would have been a ladder for them to climb up into that upper bunk. And then the second bed is down here. And this is where the mattress would have been. And when it was originally designed, it would have been a design for a smaller person on a bed. But for me, this is a grown person in a chair. So we put a much heavier duty wood as the base. And then we covered it with a vinyl tile floor to, to match the original vinyl tile as close as we could. A couple other things we did. Julie made this really awesome window cover because we had to remove the window valance for the room, and but we didn't want that an open window. So we've been a really nice cover that blends in with the wall. And this desktop is a very simple desktop. It turned out to be just the right height. Drilled a hole in the back to let the cords run in. These shelves above and below the desk were already existing. And then I installed a keyboard tray for my keyboard and mouse so that I actually have fantastic ergonomics in this office. We did a complete video about this bunkhouse to office conversion. It was actually one of our earliest videos. We'll be sure to link to that in the description below. Alright, so we're in the bathroom now. 
we this is another area that was really small on upgrades and modifications but they are things that have really made our life easier uh, one we put a small tension rod up here that we're able to dry swimsuits and stuff after we get back from the hot tub and then we also really like these dispensers so we don't have to clutter any of the space on the floor with soap and shampoo so with two of these we have one that has predominantly my stuff in it and one that has julie's stuff in it but it's great because you can keep them topped up you know how much you have left and it's super simple to disperse them while you're taking a shower it makes a huge difference in keeping your shower from being cluttered one thing i want to be sure to point out with this tension rod is it's not touching the glass of the shower it's touching the wood cabinet on the other side of the shower and then it's coming all the way across and touching this sturdy part of the fiberglass wall didn't want to put it against the glass and risk popping that out two other things we've done in the bathroom we've replaced the sink the original plastic sink got a pretty scratched up so we bought this second plastic sink from Lippert. I think it was really inexpensive, like 20 bucks, and it looks a million bucks. The original sink being plastic got discolored, and it did get a bit scratched up too, but this one looked so much better when we put that in. I was really glad we did that. And we did replace the toilet. I'm doing some repairs at Tiffin, and it was actually less expensive to replace the toilet than it was to repair it, because it's again, just a simple plastic toilet. All right, so now let's take a look at the bedroom and how we modified this. So this was your typical RV bedroom with lots of browns and beiges that came with the original bedding and linens and balances. And we wanted to brighten it up and bring in some more color and lightness and movement to more accurately reflect the fun and adventurous life that we were living. So here's what we did. First up, I called my very dear friend in Australia, Jane Brown, who is an interior stylist. And even though she's on the other side of the world, she was able to, through some photos and FaceTime, give me some great ideas on what we could do in here that wasn't going to involve anything major like painting, because I knew that being a fairly newer RV, this is a 2012, we didn't want to do anything that was going to destroy the value when the time came for us to sell it. So here's what she suggested. First of all, Mark removed the valance and we took that down and he actually built a new one. You can see the shape of this valance is very straight as opposed to the curve on the valances in the living area and compared to the original valance. So it's just got a more straight, clean line. The second thing that you'll notice is this is actually a window right behind our bed, but obviously being right behind our bed, it's not one that we ever open or leave open. It just isn't really practical. And we wanted to create the illusion of a bed head. So what we actually have here is the valance that Mark covered with the same fabric we simply ordered two duvet covers. These were from Pottery Barn. They're probably not available anymore because I bought these back in 2015. But this is a queen and then we just bought a double as an extra to be able to cut up and use to cover this valance that Mark built for the back here. Now inside you'll see there's like a white voile curtain inside and also on both sides. These are just simple tension rods from Bed Bath & Beyond. They were really inexpensive tension rods, really inexpensive voil. I actually bought these as boil curtains and then just cut them off at the end and hemmed them with some of that hem webbing tape. So I just ironed it on. So it's really simple. No sewing machine required whatsoever. So this just creates the illusion of a big white colorful bed head when it's actually just tension rods mounted with some boil curtain inside of Valance and outside of Valance. So what else we did in the bedroom here? Um, obviously just simple decor couple of cheap white photo frames from Walmart, really inexpensive, lightweight, a couple of little candle holes. We don't use real candles in the RV. We used to and we stopped just for safety reasons. We now use the little lighted LED candles that uh, you can actually put on timers and they'll come on for six hours and go off for 18 hours. So they're really inexpensive. We just got those from Amazon and uh, it's safe and it just lights the RV naturally on a timer at the same time every day, which we love. A couple more things. Uh, this is a just a plain paper lantern from World Market. I think it was six bucks or something. It was really, really inexpensive. And what we did here, what we did here is Mark just put a tiny, tiny little hook up here into the ceiling to be able to mount this on. We just put a little bit of uh, string on the end to hold that up there. This is super lightweight. And inside, for the base of the lantern, because this doesn't have any, you can see, any wiring in this whatsoever, I just made a little piece of cardboard, cut out some V's, stuck on some like museum putty to stick on one of these Timex tea light candles, 
and position that in the bottom of the lantern. Super simple. Just a piece of cardboard and a pair of scissors. And then stick this with museum putty on top. And it just sits in there and then we put the light back up. So that is our simple little paper lantern. It's just a cheap paper lantern with a little piece of cardboard, some museum putty and a timer LED candle. And I'll put the links to those down below as well. We also made a few safety upgrades. Our RV came with a carbon monoxide detector and it came with a smoke detector up at the front. But being our bedroom, we wanted to have the additional safety of having a smoke detector back here in the ceiling. And we also mounted a carbon monoxide detector here. We also mounted a fire extinguisher in the cupboard right above our bed. And it's one of the foam ones. We mounted it in a bicycle water bottle holder because it's just the right size. And this is the foam style fire extinguishers. And they're really compact. And we like having them a few places around the motorhome just for that extra little bit of safety. One thing Julie didn't mention when she was talking about this bedhead, she mentioned it's a window. This is actually the fire escape window, the exit window. So heaven forbid there's something going on in the front, this is the way we're gonna get out. And as we've been working our way to the back of the coach, just one last thing we wanted to show you. Again, another piece of canvas art. This particular one was a photo that we took at the Monterey Aquarium. And this used to be a TV on this big heavy arm that would swing around and to be able to watch TV in bed. Not only do we not watch TV in bed, we don't watch TV. So why have a big bulky thing impeding in your space when we could just have a piece of art? But when we put this on, we're also careful to leave all the original wiring in place. So it'll be super easy to reinstall the TVs when it comes time to put those back in. You can see I've also labeled all of the, with some tape, I've labeled all the individual cables so I know exactly what to connect them back up to when I put the TV in. You know, again, command hooks, and these are command hooks too, just to keep the cord all wrapped up. Pretty simple. You can see the big holes because these are put in with large, large screws into the back wall. But that'll be a pretty simple installation, but you know, I think that bracket weighed 50 pounds and the TV jutted out even when it wasn't disconnected to swing out. It was still impeding on walking around here, so that was out of here. And it's such a better thing just having a piece of canvas art on there. Well, thanks for joining us on a tour around our RV today. We hope you got some great ideas and inspiration for maybe some things you'd like to do in yours. So if you have any questions at all or any comments, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. We'd love to be able to help you and answer those. And of course, give the video a like, a thumbs up, and share it with anyone else that you think might enjoy it too. So until next time, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road. Now let's take you into the bedroom. <laughs> Do another one. All right, now let's go check out what we did in the bedroom. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> and now the room you've all been waiting to see where all the magic happens. The bedroom. <laughs> I don't think I'll use that. <laughs>